Talk to us about what you have to offer readers and journalists at such a tumultuous time in the news business. Yeah, so Substack is a subscription publishing platform for independent writers. And we're hearing a lot right now about how kind of the business model that pays for a lot of the things that we read online is one of the root causes of kind of the distorted information environment that we find ourselves in. And that's kind of the same reason we started Substack. We wanted to ha have an answer to the question, well, if you weren't going to have everything be paid for by sort of maximum attention and advertising, how could a better system work? And so what Substack is offering is an alternative business model where readers subscribe directly to writers they trust and they pay them directly, which means that they are ultimately the customer. They sort of, you know, hire and fire the reader, the, the writers that they trust. And it's kind of an alternate ecosystem to ad supported social media as we know it. And what kind of resources do you provide? You don't provide any editing or moderation or advice, right? We do provide some advice and we have a, you know, we have a, a all in one software tool that makes it so that if you're just a, an independent, you know, a writer that's going off by yourself, you can use the tool and it makes it publishes to the web, it publishes to email, it takes subscriptions, it puts everything in the right format, it kind of makes that entire process really easy. Our ambition is, you know, if you're a writer, we say come and type into this box and if the things you type into the box are good enough, like you can kind of like build your own media empire. So we provide all of that and we have some additional services that layer on top of that. So we have some legal advice. You know, we don't provide editors, but people can hire their own editors uh, and, and that often works really well. Now, if you're raising journalistic voices and individual voices that aren't subject to the sort of same fact checking and, you know, sometimes bureaucracy and, and red tape that you find at a traditional news organization, you know, are you at all concerned about leading to like sort of increasing polarization at a time when our country is so polarized and fake news and misinformation and clickbait are so rampant. You know, we think about that that stuff a lot. And we actually think that the Substack model helps make that a lot better because on Substack, when I'm a writer, the 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 thing I have to work towards is earning and keeping the trust of the people who are subscribing to me and paying me. And so I don't, I don't have an incentive to be kind of like deliberately polarizing or deliberately provoking or kind of playing into the sort of outrage game. I have to uh, convince my readers that I am a thoughtful uh, person that's worth reading. And that difference in incentives leads to much better work. You would think at a time like this that more readers might be flocking to authoritative news sources. You know, we're in the middle of a potentially big transformation or big transition in how we get our news and what we actually want to uh, see and read as President Trump presumably leaves office. I mean, he's, of course, and his tweets, which don't exist anymore, have driven a lot of the news cycle. So I wonder where you think the news industry and, and, and Substack's role in it, where is it going? How does the uh, news business evolve over the next year? I think a lot of people have, have lost faith in what they used to think of as authoritative news sources. And there are a lot of places that are have been playing the same unfortunate game of kind of like maximizing, maximizing engagement, maximizing outrage, all of these things. And I think people are, are hungry for something different. They're hungry for something that they believe that they can trust. And they're increasingly don't know where to find that. And that places like Substack that let writers go independent and have their own platform, their own voice, is a very powerful uh, solution to that. What, uh, what are the kind of popular rising trends on Substack, whether it's the most popular Substacks or most, most popular genres, for example, we, you know, local news has been kind of dying a slow death. Um, and I wonder, what are the voids you think Substack will fill? Uh, there's a huge, there's a rich diversity of of people on Substack and, and topics they're covering. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, it tends to be people that have a, a point of view that people find interesting and and want to to hear more from. We are seeing a lot of politics. We're seeing, you know, Heather Cox Richardson writes letters from an American on Substack. The Dispatch is kind of a center right independent. Uh, they're building a whole kind of like media business on top of Substack, and 
aiming to sort of fill that void of kind of this trustworthy voice that helps you make sense of all the craziness that's going on is definitely something we see a lot of demand for right now.